Additionally, we can also horizontally stretch or shrink a graph as well. So how do we determine what that happens or what does that look like? Well, we can compress or shrink a, hor a graph horizontally when we see that it's influenced by a constant with inside the function. And when the case is that constant is greater than one. Likewise, a function takes slower time to make a complete cycle or whatever it might be. And that's also influenced by a constant with inside the function, but that constant is less than one. So this constant is kind of like a speed function. How fast does a complete cycle happen? Well, it depends on the value of C. The greater the number above one, the quicker it happens, so it's compressed. The slower it happens, a number between zero and one, it's a fractional component, the slower it takes to make some type of a cycle. So let's pick out some type of a function and see what happens here. So let's imagine I have some made up f of x. Um, let's say it goes to the point negative two and four goes to that point. Uh, and let's say it has a little bit of a, a curve to it. Then let's say we also have another point that goes through the point negative two or yeah, two and negative two but this one's a little bit more of an absolute value type of a function. So we kind of have a little bit of a piecewise function here. So what happens then when we decide to go ahead and compress it? And let's say we're gonna compress it by, sorry, I mean by a two. All right, I couldn't write a good two or there. We're going to compress it by a factor of two. So that means every point gets shifted closer towards the x or towards the y axis by a factor of two. So then half the distance from this point to that point, half the distance here, half the distance here. So I would get a compression such that and then all those points were shifted by a factor of two closer into the y-axis, they were compressed. Now notice the height of, or the depths of each of those graphs remains the same. Those weren't changed. All that was changed was the distance between, um, or the, the distance from its original point on into the y-axis. All right, let's shift it a different way. Let's give it some type of a function. Again, we'll put a constant in there, but the constant this time is one half x as an example. So that means is that the time it takes for it to do a complete cycle has slowed. It takes, it has slowed by a factor of two as well. So every point now is out twice as far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this graph was at two and four, so now it's at the point four, negative or negative four. Right there, so now it just takes a little bit longer for it to do what it wants to do. And then like over here, it takes a little bit longer for it to complete its cycle as well. So here's a way that we can horizontally stretch or shrink a graph. Now I know you have a lot of information about how we can transform a graph. Vertical shifting, horizontal shifting, reflections, shifting, uh, compressions, um, all those types of things that are going on within a particular graph. And we're going to be able to have the tools to look at a basic graph and shift it and come up and obtain another graph. The other thing I want to leave you with is some of these graphs, you have to be very careful what the scale is because one graph actually might be a horizontal stretching, but it's going to look like a vertical, some type of a squishing or something it might be. So be really careful what the points are in the scale of the graph so you can determine what is happening and what is not happening.